Welcome back everybody. This week we're going to be having a look at user-defined data types inside of the Siemens S7-1200 PLC using TIA Portal. Last week we had a look at user-defined data types or UDTs inside of the Allen Bradley Control Objects program and we showed you how they act similar to data blocks inside of the Siemens PLC which we looked at the week prior to that. Now the Siemens S7-1200 PLC and TIA Portal has UDTs as well as data blocks and you can actually combine these together to create a really powerful way of grouping your data together and using that data throughout the program. What I'd like everybody to do before we get started with this week's video is hit the like button, comment below and subscribe so you can stay up to date with new videos. Now let's get started. So to create a UDT, which is a user-defined data type inside of a Siemens PLC, it's inside of this folder here, PLC data types, and we have this option to add a new data type. Now, if you remember what a UDT is, if you think about Boolean, integers, double integers, real values, they are data types within inside the PLC. We can effectively create our own. And inside of that data type, we can store whatever we want inside of there and then use that multiple times throughout the program as we would a Boolean integer, double integer or real. And then what we can do is we can even use that inside of data blocks. So if I go to add new data type, what we're going to do is we're going to create a UDT for our low pressure, medium pressure and high pressure as we have done the past couple of weeks. But what we're going to do is we're going to create one global UDT, which we're just going to call pressure test info. And then in there, what we're going to do is we're going to store the relevant information for our pressure tests. So let's just say here that I want to store again, we want to store the start time. We then want to store the end time. We then want to store the start pressure. We want to store the end pressure. We want to store the flow rate and we want to store the temperature. Okay, like so. So the start time, if we just go to Boolean, drop this down. And then if we look for time of day, that's that one. End time is going to be the same thing. So scroll down until we find time of day. And there we go. Our start pressure, what we'll do is we'll have this as a real. Like so. Put our end pressure as real as well. We'll have our flow rate as just an integer. There we go. And we'll have our temperature as an integer as well. And then what we'll also do is we'll have passed and failed inside of there. And they'll just be Boolean. So they'll just be on or off. So this is just showing us, just like we did last week with Alan Bradley Control Logics, is we've got multiple data types now being used inside of one global data type. Now at the moment, that data type is just called user data type one. We can right click that and then just select rename. And then we'll call that pressure test info. Like so. So now that we've created our data type, what we can then do is we can then use that inside of a data block. Now, if you remember with data blocks from a couple of weeks ago, data blocks is just a way of us grouping data together. Now, if we say that we've got a low pressure test, a medium pressure test, and a high pressure test, what we could do is we could group all of that information into one global data block and just call that data block pressure test. And then inside of there, we can then call the low pressure, medium pressure, and high pressure data from inside of that data block. So what I want to do here is I want to to go to add new block and where I see add new block I'm going to select a data block and I'm just going to give it the name pressure test I'm not going to call it low pressure test medium pressure test or high pressure test like we did previously I'm just going to call it pressure test and then I'm going to just say okay to that now what we did a couple of weeks ago is we created a one we created a data block and just called it high pressure test then inside of that data block we then wrote down the bits of information that we want to collect but as i mentioned just before we've got three types of pressure tests now all three pressure tests are going to be using the same information so there's a couple of ways we could do this we could create three data blocks low medium and high and then use that information inside of there we could create one data block call it pressure test and then create all of the high pressure data all of the medium pressure data and then all of the low pressure data but that there isn't going to be the most effective design inside the plc the best way we can do this is now using this data type that we have pressure test info we can then create three registers inside of this pressure test low pressure, medium pressure, and then high pressure. And then where you see the data type, 
we can then expand this menu and if we scroll down to the bottom we should now see our data type that we've just created there pressure test info so if i collect that and i just say okay to that you'll now see an arrow next to low pressure test appear if i then expand this arrow there's all of that data from that udt that we selected before if i then just change this one for the medium to pressure test info and we go to our high pressure and we change that as well the pressure test info as well now what i've done is i've created three individual data registers inside of my data block and i'm using my one global data type pressure test info and that's being called three times now effectively inside of our program so now i've got these ni nice little folders instead of me just having rows and rows of data i've got these nice little folders to categorize what data i'm collecting and then i can use this inside of my program so i can then write to it i can then read from it wherever i want to inside of the program so if I open up OB1 here, and inside network 1, if I just grab a move instruction, what I'll do is I'll put in a normally open contact before that as well, and I'll just tie that to M0.0. .0. Where I've got this move instruction, what I can then do is I can then move information in. So if I just move, let's say, 49.5 in, and I want to move that into my pressure test, and I want to move that into low pressure, and I want to move that into the end pressure, or well, let's say the start pressure. There we go. What I could then do is I could then branch down and I could move, let's say, 39.6 and I could then change that to pressure test. I can then go to medium pressure and then I can go to start pressure here. And then finally, I can then do another one. Let's just say, I'll tell you what, let's actually move data from a pressure test into this pressure test over here so let's show that we can move data from the data block into another area of the data block as well so if i go to pressure test and then go to low pressure i want to then take the start pressure and then file that into my pressure test for our high pressure now and start pressure there so what we're now doing is we're moving static values or values from the program into my data block and then i'm moving data from that data block as well into other parts of that data block as well so taking information from it and then sending it into other areas of the data block as well now obviously we wouldn't be doing this in a real program because you wouldn't want to transfer the low pressure test into the high pressure test as it's two different tests but this is just an example here so bear with me what i could then also do is i can then turn on bits as well so if i just go into this network over here i can then turn on bits so then if i just type in m0.1 and i go to pressure test and let's say i want to then turn on the low pressure test past bit i can then do that from here if i then drop this down over here i can then put in an output coil and then tie that to pressure test over here and let's go to high pressure test failed so what we can actually do is we can turn on bits from inside of the data block from inside of that UDT. And this is now just a really powerful way of just grouping data together inside of the program, allowing us to easily structure our data together and making it easier to read, easier to understand. And there's less chance of errors in the program because we're just using one global UDT instead of constantly copying our information and then pasting it over again or rewriting it out again. It groups our data together nicely inside of the program. Now before I can download this, what I want to do is I want to go into my device configuration. The PLC that I've got in this project is a 1214C, but I'm actually connected to a 1215C. So what I will do is I'll then select change device. And I will then select our 1215C. DC, DC, DC. And it's the AG40. And there we go. Right now if I then just go to download to device. Okay, so here we go. So if I go online now, and then just uh, drop that box down. So here what we've got is we've got two networks. One network which is just turning on the bits inside of that data block, and then we've got a other network which is moving data into data block areas. So what I'll actually do here is I'm gonna add in a contact into this network. So this one has to trigger separately and then what i'll do is i'll download that information now so we'll move the data into the low pressure and the medium pressure and then we'll trigger the next bit to then move the data from the low pressure into the high pressure so you can see it taking place in different stages 
Right, so if I then go to M0.0, we can currently see inside of our low pressure and inside of our medium pressure, it's zero. If I then just open up the pressure test data block and just open up the data registers inside of there and then just go to monitor mode, we can then see the values inside of there. They're all zero. So now if I go to my main and I just modify M0.0 to one, we have then shifted data from our static values into our pressure test. And if I open up our pressure test data block, we can now see inside of the low pressure, from the start pressure value, it's now 49.5. The medium pressure is now 39.6, but the high pressure is still zero, and that's because we haven't triggered the second bit. So as I mentioned, we can actually take data from one side and then transfer that into another area inside of the data block. So let's do that now. Let's modify this to one. We've taken data from our low pressure data block and fired it into the same data block where our high pressure is located. And then if we go into our pressure test over here, we can now see that our high pressure reads the same now as our low pressure. So if I just go back here and I just zero our M bit and then scroll down, what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to enable these bits. So if we look at the bits currently inside of the program, we can see that these bits are all false. They're all off. So if we then just modify M0.0 to 1, there's those bits turning on and there's the bits turning on inside of the PLC as well. So again, it's just allowing us to now manipulate data from one block inside of the program using one global data type. A big benefit of this is if I now just zero that, so I just take that off there, and I go offline, if I now go to my pressure test info and I want to collect some more data, let's just say I want to collect the panel number, and I also want to uh, collect the operator barcode. Uh, the panel number will just be an integer and the operator barcode will be a string value. There we go. If I want to do that, if we now go to our pressure test now, you'll see these red indicators and that's because the data type has now changed. Instead of me having to go into my data block and then rewrite those two registers three more times, let's just imagine it was 10 registers I added to my data type, I would then have to add that three times inside of the program. All I would then do is I would then just go into my PLC over here, compile my program, just the software, rebuild all blocks, and now what you'll see inside of here is the red disappears. Now if I open up the low pressure, there's my panel number, there's my operator barcode. If I open up the medium pressure, there's my panel number, operator barcode, and it's the same thing with the high pressure as well. I can now just update data in one global area and it'll update throughout the rest of my program. It saves me from having to write this again multiple times inside of the program. So if you just have to imagine I had to do 10 extra data registers, let's just say test one, test two, test three, nine, 10. If I added 10 new data registers, I would then have to do that for all of my data types inside of my data block. I would then have to do that for the high pressure test, the low pressure test, the medium pressure test of my data block if I wasn't using a UDT. But since I'm using a UDT, all I would now do is just compile the program, rebuild all blocks, and then when I go back into my pressure test data block, everything is now inside of there. And now what I've done is I've added 10 new registers or technically 30 new registers to my data block within seconds. And that would have then taken a lot longer if I had to do that for every single iteration inside of the program. That there is UDTs inside of our PLC using TIA portal. It's now a really powerful way of grouping data together, using it inside of our UDT, then using that UDT throughout our data block to then use throughout the program. I hope you've enjoyed the short introduction to UDTs. If you want to learn more about Siemens TI Portal, I'll put a link up here so that you can click this link and then it'll take you to our online course where you can then enroll and then learn how to use Siemens S7 PLCs with Siemens TIA Portal. I'll see you on the next video.